in the name of allah who is the most beneficent and most merciful my name is arij fatma from department of bs chemistry today i am going to present the presentation of industrial chemistry 2 and my topic of presentation is paint so let's come towards contents first of all we discuss the introduction of paints then history and composition of paints and composition includes binders pigments solvents and additives first of all introduction paints have been manufactured since prehistoric times but until recently they were highly expensive and thus were mainly used for artwork it is only since the 19th century that houses have commonly been painted today paints are used for coloring and protecting many surfaces including houses cars road markings and underground storage vessels the interior and exterior paints are created with unique resistance qualities specific to environments they operate in the interior paints are primarily designed for stain scrub and blocking resistance and the exterior paints are focused on mildew dirt and blister or peeling resistance quality interior and exterior paints should incorporate color retention and resistance to fading and chalking high quality paints will also be made of superior components and include a better ratio of those components history paint is one of the oldest synthetic substances known with the history stretching back into the prehistoric times it was made more than 35000 years ago by prehistoric man as they mixed clays and chalks with animal fats and used these paints to dip their hands on cave walls by 2500 bc the egyptians had improved this technology considerably they had developed a clear blue pigment by grinding as a right and instead of animal fats they used gums wax and maybe also albumin which is the egg white as binders and solvents for their paints the technology improved still further during the first millennium bc as the greeks learned to blend paints with hot wax rather than water making a paint that was both thicker and easier to spread and thus making it possible to blend colors by this time many colors were available from both natural and synthetic sources one of the most interesting being a purple pigment made from heating yellow earth till it turned red and then plunging into vinegar then the technology lapsed for many years with techniques being passed down from generation to generation by traveling craftsmen this continued until the 18th century when paint factories began to be opened in europe and america by the 19th century this mass production had brought prices down to such an extent that houses began to be painted now in the 20th century the chemistry of many aspects of paint manufacture and functions is understood meaning that paint manufacture has finally moved from being an art to being a science then we talk about composition of paint paint is essentially a mixture of binder pigments solvents and additives binder is which sticks the paint to the surface and uh, pigments give the paint color make it opaque and occasionally to prevent corrosion and the solvents make the paint spreadable the chemistry of these components is outlined first of all the basic composition of paint solvents pigments additives and resins binder then i will discuss the chemistry of binders chemistry of pigments and chemistry of solvents first of all 
the chemistry of binders what is binder a coating that binds the pigment providing adhesion integrity and toughness to the dry paint film paint technology adv advanced very little until this century even as recently as the 1960s drying oils were the commonest paint binders drying oils are substances when spread out in a film will dry to form a continuous skin linseed oil the most common example of drying oil which is which will dry in 2 to 3 days while the other oils such as soybean oil may take up to 10 days linseed oil is a mixture of triglycerides of long chain carboxylic acids and some of the major component carboxylic acids are linoleic acid Uh, and oleic acid and these are the structures of these acids the palmitic acid and stearic acid is also the example of linseed oil many common drying oils contain these compounds and others including ileostearic ele and rhenoleic acids in various ratios the drying process in a complex one of polymorphism polymerization probably catalyzed by peroxides as described by former in 1912 the theory is that drying progresses as follows the first step is double bonds are oxidized by atmospheric oxygen and gives hydro peroxy groups and in the second step these peroxides then decompose to give radicals in the third step the radicals then initiate various polymerization reactions and before recombining these are the reactions occur other reactions also occur including the diels elder reaction This is the Diels Elder reaction mechanism. The drying process may be accelerated by the addition of small quantities of metals such as lead, cobalt or manganese compounds. These are also called dryers. Lead compounds are rarely used in modern paints due to their high toxicity. Dryer catalyzes peroxide decomposition as follows. And this is the reaction of catalyzation of peroxide peroxide decomposition natural compounds vary widely and the proportions of the constituent triglycerides will vary from batch to batch of oil various processes have been used to improve the properties of oils and until the advent of modern technology these process also involve the increasing the uh, molecular weight of oil by controlled oxidation then we talk about uh, alkyl resins the most important and extensively used solvent based resins in the paint industry today are the alkyl resins these are classed as polyesters because the large resin molecules are built up by a process of esterification reaction what is ester an ester is produced by heating together an alcohol and acid and this is the reaction in which ethanol acetic acid and uh, ethanolic acid reacts to form ethyl ethanoate and water is also releases esters formed in this type of reaction from monofunctional constituents are chemicals of fixed known and easily determined molecular mass and structure these they are non resinous uh, for many normal and uh, artificial flavors are also esters if polyfunctional ingredients are used more complicated reactions occur propylene glycol and adipic acid reacts to form the ester and uh, then this ester uh, reacts to form polyesters this type of reaction is carried out at temperature of 180 to 20 uh, 250 degrees celsius 
usually under an inert ga gas until the required acid value or the required viscosity is reached. The commonest starting product for the class of polyester resins known as alkyl resins are 1, 2, 3 trihydroxypropane, which is also called glycerol and pathalic anhydride. And this is the structure of glycerol and pathalic anhydride. Other common components of alkyl resins are given. However, alkyl resins made from acids and alcohols are of little practical use in the manufacture of paints. Films formed from them are yielding dull, soft, tacky films of poor durability. By incorporating oils in the reaction mixture, some of the long chain carboxylic acids in the triglyceride are replaced by difunctional acids. This gives resins which yield films with durability, excellent color, retention, and superior gloss to films formed from drying oils. These are known as oil modified alkyl resins. Other agents that have been used to modify alkyl for use in paints are also given. Many modern oil based paints are alkyl modified in some way or other. Alkyls are also used in both air drying paints and heat cured stoving enamels. A typical alkyl resin for use in glossy household paint would also contain something similar to the following ratio, 85 glycerol uh, and 135 ethylic anhydride, 150 linseed oil and 135 abiotic acid and 35 phenolic resins. And this is the table of uh, some polyhydric and uh, diabasic uh, polyhydric alcohols and uh, diabasic acids, which are used in the manufacture of alkyl resins. Emulsion. Alkyl paints consist of a pigment, solvent, and binder, which are all mutually soluble. An emulsion paint consists of pigment and solid or semi-solid polymeric particles, which are dispersed in a continuous aqueous medium in which they are insoluble. This emulsion is made from monomers, initiators which cause the monomers to polymerize and act as the binder. Water and emulsifiers, which keep the monomers and um, later the polymers in the emulsion. Water-based paints based on acrylic and vinyl emulsions are the most extensively used paints in the decorative market, accounting for some 70% of the volume. These are the additives which are used in alkyl resins. Uh, the first additive uh, reduced drying time and improve the durability of paint. And the second additive use a reduced drying time and also improve durability of paint. And the third additive is uh, co-polymerized to make more durable glossy paints and especially effective with dark paints. Abiotic acid dries quickly um, produces glossy paints and soluble in aliphatic solvents. And the phenolic resins, which is um, resist to water, alkali, grease, and oil, and it gives the hard surface and glossy finish. Alkali resins, the monomers are substances that are able to be polymerized by free radical polymerization they have a double bond. Some common monomers are uh, vinyl acetate, styrene, 
methyl methacrylate, butyl methacrylate, and acrylonitrile, and their structures are given. The resulting products are often termed acrylics. The polymerization of the monomers is caused by initiators. These are often persulfates and commonly activated, decomposed into free radicals by iron 2. And the reaction is given. The free radical then starts the polymerization reaction with styrene. And a formulated blend of these monomers is polymerized in water under controlled temperature conditions as the reactions are exothermic. Initiators such as ammonium persulfate are added to start the free radical. Uh, activators are also added to speed up the dissociation of initiators. Uh, mostly ferrous ammonium sulfate is used for, uh, to add uh, and hence increase the concentration of radicals. Emulsifiers or surfactants are added to stabilize the emulsion. The final product consists of suspension of polymer micelles whose diameter is about 0.1 and 1.0 micrometer. Each micelle is coated by a layer of emulsifier, one end of which is attracted, attached to particle while the other extends into the surrounding water by holding the micelle in a stable suspension. Then epoxy resins. Epoxy resins are derived from simple organic compound, oxyrane ethylene oxide. Uh, the commonest starting products for epoxy resins are epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A. The simplest epoxy resin from these ingredients is the diglycidyl ether formed by reacting two moles of epichlorohydrin with one mole of bisphenol A. And the final product is given below. Epoxy resins may be low viscosity fluids or high molecular mass solid res resins. Epoxy resins may be used to form films if they are polymerized by addition of suitable curing agents. The epoxy group will react with active hydrogen uh, containing nucleophiles such as water, Grignard reagent and uh, HX where X is uh, fluorine, bromine, uh, chlorine or iodine to form a hydroxyl group. The commonest nucleophile which is used in the paint industry is amino group which contained amines or amides. The secondary amine formed may react with another epoxy group. Here, the activated hydrogen is a hydrogen with partial positive charge that will be attached by neg partial negative charge of oxygen in the epoxide group. By use of amines or amides possessing a minimum of three active hydrogens, a three-dimensional polymeric structure may be built up. Epoxy resins may be modified with many other resins, such as phenol formaldehyde, urea formaldehyde, mel melamines, alkydes, or even drying oils for example, linseed oil to produce resins having a very wide range of properties. Epoxies are usually only used in industrial and marine areas and restricted to use as primers. And intermediate built coats due to their poor performance on exposure to UV visible light. They are often used in conjunction with polyurethane top coat. What are polyurethanes? Uh, these have been developed from a reaction discovered by O. Bayer in Germany in 1930s. Bayer AG is amongst the world leaders in the manufacture of resins used in polyurethane paints. 
urethanes may be considered to be the reaction product of addition of hydroxyl group over the nc of an isocyanide group and here is the reaction for the formation of urethane ethyl carbamate polyurethanes are derived of derivatives of urethane which are produced from reaction of difunctional uh, alcohols with difunctional isocyanates they may be used in the manufacture of formed plastics elastomers and surface coatings and paints uh, here is the reaction in which this functional difunctional alcohols reacts with a difunctional isocyanides and gives the elastomers polyurethane paint systems have been developed which are characterized by tough durable films which retain their gloss for long periods and which are very resistant to weathering they are often very easy to clean polyurethanes are commonly used for painting aircraft these are very many other synthetic resins which are used in manufacture of paints and these include phenol for aldehydes urea for aldehydes melamines vinyls acrylic resins and chlorinated rubber next is chemistry of pigments pigments serve three main functions first is the optical function of uh, providing color opacity and gloss a protective function with regards to surface underneath the paint and with regards to the binder which can be destroyed by uv and a reinforcing function for the paint itself in that they help the binder to stick pigments are composed of tiny solid particles which is less than 1 micrometer in diameter a size that enables them to reflect light Uh, and uh, this light has wavelengths between 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer for the pigment to be effective it has to be evenly dispersed throughout the solvent and in contact with the solvent uh, uh, surrounding pigment particles is a layer of most moist air and in some cases other gases if a pigment is not properly wet in a paint it may result in color streak streakiness in the finished paints the solvents and pigments must be chosen that result in a well wetted pigment wetting and dispersing agents are used to improve the wetting properties of resin or solvent system a variety of natural and synthetic pigments are used in paints which provides a complete spectrum of colors and a variety of finishes pigments are broadly classified as either organic or inorganic in in organic pigments the color is due to light energy which is absorbed by the delocalized b electrons of a conjugated system and the um, uh, electrons do not usually absorb all wavelengths of light so some frequencies are allowed to pass through it is this unabsorbed light that we see so the color of a given pigment is opposite color of frequencies which is absorbed by the molecule the greater the number of conjugated bonds in a system the lower the energy of light absorbed the molecule with little or no conjugation will absorb in uv light and hence white color appears whereas with more conjugation will absorb in the blue and appears yellow or in the green and appear red functional groups that absorb visible light and hence appear colored are called chromophores and some of the more common are n double bond n carbon double bond carbon and uh, some of these functional groups first of all organic pigments organic pigments are usually preferable as in general they are brighter stronger this varies greatly between organic pigments more transparent 
more stable. In addition, they have greater tinting strength. Less pigment is required to get an equally strong color. Better gloss development and some absorb UV light, preventing it from them. However, inorganic pigments are also widely used as they do not bleed or heat and light stable and are much cheaper than organic pigments. In addition, they are used for some specialist pigments uh, such as anti corrosion pigments and for black and white pigments as it is not possible to get pure black or white organic pigment. White pigment, for example, titanium dioxide is widely agreed to be single most important pigment in use today. It is the strongest known pigment in terms of both opacity and tinting strength, which coupled with its pure white tint and its fine particle size means that it can be used as an opacifier to prepare films with a high hiding power and reduce pigment content, which, which has resulted in paints with much improved elasticity and it also improved durability. What is conjugated system? A conjugated system is one consisting of alternating single and double bond in which B electrons are delocalized. The electrons of second electron pair of double bond uh, B electrons uh, are free to move between all the conjugated atoms. There are some common classes of organic pigments. In, uh, in the first group, monoazo, uh, for example, azo dyes, azo dyes give uh, yellow, orange, red, brown, and violet color. One means yellow color and two value means orange, three red, four brown, five violet, six blue, and seven green. Diazo, for example, diaryllide yellows give yellow and uh, orange, red, brown, and blue color. Next, azo metal complex, for example, nickel azo yellow, PG10, it gives the yellow color, red color, and green color. Benzene diazolone gives yellow, orange, red, and brown color. Then, uh, polycyclic pigments uh, in uh, copper. Phytalocyanine gives blue and green color. Anthraquinone, uh, for example, dibrom anthenron gives all the color shades, and uh, uh, queen uh, acridone red gives them only yellow, red, and violet color. Dioxazine violet gives the violet color and uh, pyrilene gives the red and brown color. Tetrachlorothiol indigo gives only violet color. These are some common inorganic pigments. Uh, carbon black, it produces from decomposition of carbonaceous matter and its advantage is high strength. It gives the high strength, good color, light and weather resistance and its disadvantage is it thickens paint and gives black color. Titanium dioxide uh, advantages are uh, high strength, high opacity, cheap, good UV resistance 
and its disadvantage is it forms radicals that degrade the binder and it produces the um, white color iron oxides usually mined although can be synthesized and uh, its advantage is uh, light and weather resistant and it is unreactive and uh, iron oxides cannot produce clean shades and it gives yellow red brown and black color next is zinc chromates it is synthesized according to reaction and its advantage is chromium formed by reaction is inhibited according to reaction and uh, its uh, zinc chromate thickens paints and it produces yellow color as the right uh, gives rich colors fades on contact with acid and it is the only disadvantage uh, and it appears red, blue color chromium oxides advantages are, are light weather alkali and it's resistant and it is thermally stable and chromium oxides does not give clear colors it produces green and blue color cadmium sulfide react reacting cadmium salts with sodium sulfide uh, and there is the advantages of cadmium sulfide heat and light resistant uh, and uh, clear pigment high opacity and uh, cadmium sulfides are expensive poor weather resistance and it produces greenish yellow to red to bordex color lithopon uh, synthesized according to reaction pure tints when mixed with organics unreactive easily wetted poor weather resistance and it produces white color pigments pigments provide other properties to paints than just color and hiding power the anti corrosive pigments are a very important area of study steel is probably the more metal most often uh, requiring protection against corrosion and development of pigments to inhibit the corrosion of steel has occupied chemists for many years the anti corrosive pigment which has been used for many years in red lead pv3 o4 in combustion combination with linseed oil red lead has in the past been the standard anti corrosive primer for iron and steel unfortunately red lead is toxic and much research has been and is still being carried out worldwide to find anti corrosive pigments which are as effective as red lead anti corrosive pigments for iron and steel commonly in use include zinc phosphate zinc molybdate zinc chromate and barium metaborate alternatives to chromates are being sought as they are toxic and environmentally hazardous paints are often formulated with other mineral compounds included we do not provide any staining power or opacity these are known as extenders and are very important part of the paint formulators toolkit extenders may be used to improve the application characteristics as flatting agents to provide flat or semi gloss finishes to prevent settlement of pigments or provide better king sticking properties for subsequent coatings common extenders are as follows the common name uh, of the first extender is whiting and formula is cacao3 and uh, undercoats and flat paints dark uh, hydrated magnesium silicate and it assists cio2 dispersion and it improves sanding barides and its formula is baso4 and its use is traffic paints wear resistant pigment extender kaolin hydrated aluminum silicate and it assists cio2 dispersion decreases viscosity silica uh, act as flattening agent uh, traffic paints wear resistant 
mica hydrous aluminium potassium silicate and it uses as chemically and solid resistant improves water resistance one special type of pigment has become of importance in recent years which is the metallic pigment many modern cars have metallic finishes and this appearance is due to the inclusion of finely divided aluminum bronze may also be used as decorative pigment uh, zinc and lead powders are also used as pigments but in this case the metal powder has anti corrosive properties galvanic type coatings containing zinc powder are an important tool in production of steel work and are the subject of continuous research and development third is chemistry of solvents solvents are necessary to ensure an even mixing of paint components and to make them easy to apply the solvents use differ with way in which the paint will be applied as the drying rate required differs depending on the manner of application for example the solvents in spray paints need to evaporate much more quickly than those in brush applied paints in general a blend of solvents is used to produce a paint that will surface and through dry at the correct rate without uneven shrinkage white spirit and uh, mineral turpentine are probably the most widely used solvents many other compounds find use in paint formulation and these are uh, the compounds that have uh, used methyl ethyl ketone toluene and methyl isobutyl ketone xylene is a mixture of all three ortho para and meta are all used as a solvent butyl acetate and one methoxy to propyl acetate is also used as a solvent in a paint environmental and economic considerations there is a pronounced movement worldwide to the development of high quality water thinnable paints to supersede the current widely used organic solvent thin paint in the field of household paints there are now emulsion paints that provide performance equal to that of orthodox materials but in the industrial paint field water thinnable paints are as yet only a minor percentage of paints in use organic solvents are derived from petroleum many countries are reliant on expensive imported raw materials from which to produce their solvents very few uh, paint manufacturing countries lack water in addition organic solvent vapors are atmospheric pollutants which in some cases can produce smog in the environment then the role of laboratory it is the job of paint technologists to carry out research and development with suitable binders pigments and thinners in order to finally produce a ideal paint which meets certain requirements set down by a customer that customer may be a car manufacturer who will require a total paint system for both decorating and protecting the very thin sheet steel of an automotive body in that case the paint will be required to have a high gloss and be resistant to fuel oil and detergent its primer system must be able to slow the corrosion process all this will be required for a system which may be less than 125 micrometer in total thickness at perhaps the other end of the scale the customer may be an engineer who wishes to protect the outside of steel tanks which are to be buried in the ground in that case the system will again be required to slow the corrosion of the steel but appearance will not matter and the owner of the tank will not want to dig it up at regular intervals 
it is likely that the total thickness may exceed 500 micrometer and that's all from my side thank you